what I'm going to do this morning is, is try to tell you a little about how veterans use social media. Um, but in the vein of what Rob said, knowing your audience, how many people in here uh, use Facebook? So almost, almost everybody. <laughs> what about Twitter? <laughs> almost everybody. So, okay. And everybody uses YouTube. Um, so this will be, some of this is a little preaching to the choir, but I, I think everybody in here knows the power of social media and, and understands the power of these platforms. But not everybody knows how veterans utilize social media in communications. I'm not trained in social media. This is something that I sort of fell into a few years ago. Um, my experience using uh, online tools of communication really started in 2006 when I wrote my first diary on Daily Coast. Um, that was the, my first experience with it. Uh, I ended up parlaying that into a position at Vote Vets. And while at Vote Vets, we ended up fiddling around with all these new media tools uh, to the point that we got pretty good at it. Uh, it was not something that we set out to do consciously. You know, we didn't say we're going to abandon traditional media and we're going to use all these new platforms to communicate with people. It was really out of necessity. That's where our constituents were. That's where veterans were, and that's where we found them. And so we started using all the, you know, all the, um, the social media tools. Well, after a couple of years of, that, of doing that, I had, we had really tinkered with it enough, and I had fiddled around with it enough to the point where uh, I accepted a position with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs to start their office and really branch out and, and take hold of reaching veterans and communicating with veterans at the national level, of, at the governmental level, not just the nonprofit sector. And in the last year of doing that, I've, I've uh, really learned a lot about how veterans interact online and, and what they like and dislike. And uh, so I'll just go over a couple of those. Um, first of all, Everybody, pretty much everybody in the Roots Nation you're going to see uses Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, and YouTube. Um, everybody's aware of it. It's not as um, uniform across the military. For instance, uh, lots of veterans use Facebook. We, when I got to VA, we had a Facebook page that had already been set up before I got there. It had about 800 fans. Um, once. I, once we really started pushing it, and we actually started investing in it and actually using the tool, uh, in the last year we've gotten, we've gained over 40,000 fans. Uh, in about, 10, uh, about nine months, we've gained 40,000 fans on Facebook. Um, and VA now has the largest subscribership among cabinet level agencies. Um, and that really goes to show there, that if you want to reach veterans, Facebook is one of your primary methods of doing so. Interestingly, we haven't had as much success on Twitter. Uh, in the last nine, ten months, we've, we've gotten about five or 6,000 Twitter followers. But it's not, it, it, it's, it's in the medium range in terms of other cabinet level agencies. And it doesn't seem to me, based on what I've seen in terms of our traffic and the response we get, that as many veterans are on Twitter. I don't know if that's just a matter of us not using it correctly or if veterans just aren't there. Um, but it's something that, that everybody who's interested in this topic needs to explore and uh, to figure out how we can utilize it better. YouTube is always popular. YouTube, if, if you didn't know, is, is actually the, I think, the largest search engine in the world now. I think it beats Google for daily searches. Um, it, if it's not the first, it's the second. Uh, and so. It's, it's very powerful, and veterans definitely use it. Now, one thing that surprised me in the last year is the popularity of Flickr. Flickr, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is a photo sharing tool. It's the photo version of YouTube, uh, and it's one of several. But I, I did not think that it, was be, it would be as popular as it really is. Every time we post uh, Flickr links on the VA homepage, uh, we, we will get, end up getting thousands of views. Um, and I think the reason for that is when you post a video, people often don't have enough time. People don't have much attention span these days, and, and they're going from one thing to the next, and they want bite-sized bits of information. So when you say we've got a video here to watch, 
a lot of times people think, well, I don't, I don't want to sit here for four minutes and watch your video. But if you say, we've got some photos from this event, it's not a video, we got photos, uh, they'll click on it and they'll actually check out the photos and it's really easy for them to do. And so we've determined that, that it's a, you know, we can, we can balance how we want to reach people, but we've, we've figured out that Flickr is a really surprisingly good way to reach veterans. We also have figured out in the last year that veterans want to interact on the local level. And I think this is something that you see in politics as well. People want to interact on the local level, sometimes more so than they do on the national level. Our website traffic, uh, we, we get about 100,000 visits a day, and over half of that consists of people visiting their local VA medical centers. So what that tells us is that they want information at the local level. They want information from local leaders on local issues. So what we've done is we've started, um, all our VA medical centers are now launching Facebook and Twitter feeds um, so that we can provide that information because we want to, you know, we always want to get the right information to the right people at the right time. And using those local facilities to provide that has really worked out well for us in the past few months that we've been doing it. So, um, that, that's, that's essentially it. When, when you're using these tools as outreach, what you don't want to do, though, is, is neglect any of the platforms. I mean, you, you always want to use, uh, whether, whether it's the, the ones that we've listed or if it's other ones, um, you know, Snapfish or whatever, you want, to use, you want to use your website for direct information, you want to use Twitter and Facebook for direct information, and you want to use Facebook and Twitter for social networking, and then you don't want to neglect video and photos because you never know which, which of these are going to strike a chord with which veterans. So that was, that's, those are essentially the lessons we've learned in the last years. Topic. And when you think about the impacts of social media across all the different communities, but think about the impact it's had on the military. Um, the Department of Defense has actually now put out a statement that said all, it's, all the men and women serving will have access uh, via the internet to social uh, networking sites. They will not be blocked by the DOD behind um, firewalls and, and you know, classified computer networks and things like that because um, think about just five years ago, I mean, when I, I went on deployment in 2004 and, and, and even email was still essentially just kind of new and, and I had an occasional phone call every couple months and you literally pick between like, you know, my, my, my girlfriend, my mom and my dad. Like, who did I want to talk to this month? You know, and that's, and you think about what Facebook and, and YouTube are doing for the men and women who are deployed today, where they literally can, can see daily what's going on with their families, where they can upload the videos of parents reading to their children, you know, you know, fathers serving in Afghanistan who are able to read books to their kids and send the video links back to the home. And I mean, it's really incredible. And it's a, uh, it, it's, it's, it's revolutionized uh, some of the connection between um, the deployed forces and the home front. Um, I'm just going to wrap up on one final note, and that's about talking about success um, when it comes to progressives in the military. Um, this is an election cycle we're in here. As I mentioned, Doug's running for office down there in Florida. Um, but uh, the accomplishments um, that both uh, this administration and uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs and this Congress uh, have had for veterans and the broader military community are something that we all should be out there talking about till we're blue in the face, uh, whether it's the GI Bill, which has uh, two, over 250,000 um, young veterans attending college today, uh, really in a, 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 a new next greatest generation literally in college today, whether it's the largest increases in funding for the VA in over three decades, whether it's uh, radical uh, legislation focused on, radical is the wrong word, um, important legislation really focused on, on wounded warriors, on women's health issues, on uh, uh, um, on rural health care, uh, things that have been neglected for a long time. This Congress and this administration have made huge bounds uh, and have really stood up for veterans and the military community. So I encourage you if you're out there, if you're working on campaigns, if you're working on uh, political campaigns, advocacy campaigns, anything, talk about the successes that we've had as a progressive community because we've really stood up uh, and we've delivered over the last two years.